Hello and welcome to the segment of 2819 where we get to take a little more scholarly look at some of the arguments that are out there. Today I'm joined by Dr. Hugh Ross and we're going to investigate some of the scientific arguments for the age of the earth. Hugh, it's good to have you here today. Well, thank you. So this has been a, a long-running discussion, uh, you know, at least decades worth of discussion in the Christian church of, or the church of whether the earth is a few thousand years old, a few billion years old. Uh, looked earlier in the show of some of the maybe the, the biblical evidences for it. I want to kind of probe some of the scientific evidences. And what do you see as some of the good scientific evidences that the earth really is billions of years old? Well, what impresses me is some of that's actually cited in scripture, where you got David talking about the age-old hills uh, or the ancientness of the Kidron River. And what the text is referring there is the fact that you can see evidence of erosion. You know, when mm. David wrote that, he was in the wilderness, where you see piles of stones and talus at the bottoms of these uh, peaks, and realizing, you know, one rock might fall every three or four days, and look at the pile of rocks at the bottom or you see the meandering of the Kidron River. And then just looking at the bio deposits, I think this is something every lay person can recognize. There's a lot of coal in the crust of the earth, a lot of limestone, a lot of marble, uh, oil, and natural gas. And all that got deposited by previous generations of life. And you need a long history of life in order to build up all those bio deposits and realize that was part of God's generosity towards us. He waited to create human beings until there were resources from previous generations of life that would enable us to launch and sustain global civilization. I mean, there's over 76 quadrillion tons of these biodeposits in the crust of the earth. So, I, I mean, I think that's a very reasonable way to look at things, you know, that uh, David's looking there and seeing things falling and saying, well, this is going to take this long. But there's an assumption built into that is that the processes happen at the same rate. And one of the common objections is that the flood, uh, Noah's flood, was a catastrophic event that everything just happened a lot faster. So how would you respond to that objection when you're talking about these biodeposits or piles of rocks? Yeah, that changing the laws or constants of physics isn't going to help. I mean, I hear young earth creationists saying, well, maybe the light from the sun was converted with 100% efficiency into these biodeposits. Mm -hmm. There's orders of magnitude, way more biodeposits that can be explained even with 100% efficiency conversion from the sun. So in, in at least part of that objection is say to get that amount of biodeposits, you need to have that length of life. In order to do that, you'd have to change the constants of physics so that the earth received more energy. Is that, that, that's entailed in that objection, correct? You would need a completely different star than the sun. Gotcha, okay. Uh, the sun's not shining enough light or heat. And you say, well, we can go with a hotter star, but if you go with a hotter star, that wipes out life on planet Earth. Okay, so, so there are scientific objections to having just everything happen a lot faster then. It so. is, and there's scientific evidence that the laws of physics have not changed, right. affirming what the Bible says. I mean, we're both astronomers. When you look at distant galaxies and stars, you're measuring the laws of physics as you look at that light. And those measurements tell us that the laws of physics at every look back time we care to choose are identical to the laws that we measure in the lab. Yeah, I, f I find that a pretty amazing thing that we can look across the universe and we find those laws, th those constants of physics being essentially identical to what we see here in the lab. Right, so, right. So, okay, so you got the, the, the amount of bio deposits, just seeing some of that. What, what other... Uh, what other evidences do you see as particularly compelling that the Earth is much older than just a few thousand years? Well, for example, there's no plutonium or neptunium left in the Earth. Okay, and we're going to have to explain why that's important because most people never encounter those two elements anyway. <laughs> oh, they don't for good reason. The, the Earth is too old. And, and uh, explain all why. Stuff, all that stuff is decayed away. Both neptunium, plutonium, and neptunium have radiometric decay half-lives that are in the tens of millions to the millions of years. So the fact that none of this stuff is left on the crust of the Earth uh, tells us that the Earth must be so old that all those elements have completely decayed away. And likewise, we can look at the uranium and thorium and potassium. They're still here, but these are radioisotopes with very long half-lives. And so the quantities we see in the face of the Earth are consistent with the Earth being about four and a half billion years old. And the argon in our atmosphere, all the argon in our atmosphere comes from the radiometric decay of potassium. And just the sheer quantity of argon in the atmosphere tells us that that potassium must have been decaying for a very long period of time.
So this, th there's two two elements of that uh, piece of evidence that I want to probe. One is uh, the idea that there are not certain elements here, in some sense, could be not very interesting because. Uh, you know, it just could have been very well that God didn't create the earth with those sort of elements in them. Why would we assume that those elements were there and that they've just all decayed away as opposed to not being well, here in the first place? Well, we see those elements being produced in real time in stars. And so, you know, stars make this stuff, uh, especially the bigger stars. And so, uh, and we look at the sun. Uh, the sun doesn't have those elements either, which tells us that the sun must have formed late in the history of the universe. Okay, so, so the idea is we look out into the heavens, we see these elements being we see, produced. We see them in the universe, but we don't see them in the crust of the earth. And, and those processes naturally would have produced them earlier would in the history. Would have produced them. And the fact that they have a long enough half-life means they were here, but they've just had a chance to decay away. Right, and the ones we do have are what we'd expect if indeed the earth is four and a half billion years old. Now, one of, one of the other common objections that comes up to that, and this goes somewhat to the laws of physics changing, but it's a little bit more catastrophic in that there was a period of time, you know, somewhere in the creation week or maybe during the flood where God accelerated the rates of decay and that's why certain things are gone. So all the decay happened, it just happened in a very brief period of time. Yeah. Is I'm, there evidence I'm... for or against that? Well, there's biblical evidence against it because the Bible says there's been no change in the laws of physics. Fair enough. Let, let's stick with the science here. And so. if you stick with the science, if you accelerate the radiometric decay rates by a million or a billion times, you wind up vaporizing all life on the face of the earth. And the biblical text says that didn't happen. Okay, so it just uh, that's that's a profound point that is not intuitively obvious. So why do you end up getting so much heat just because the rates are accelerated. Well, I'll give you one thing everybody can understand. If you were to accelerate the velocity of light by a factor of a million times, Einstein's equation, E equals mc squared, where c is the velocity of light, means that the energy from the sun coming on the surface of the Earth would be a trillion times greater. Okay, that's So you've got a, a trillion <laughs> times more light and heat coming on the surface of the Earth, you're not going to have Adam and Eve or any life form surviving. Matter of fact, the Earth would be vaporized. Okay, that makes sense, but how does accelerating the decay rates produce so much heat? Because that's a little different phenomenon there. Well, when an, a radioisotope decays, it releases heat, it releases light. And so you're going to get a lot more heat being irradiated. Like if you speed up the uranium decay rate by a factor of a million times, uh, you're going to get a million times more heat being released, a million times more radiation going through your body. And that's going to be a problem. Okay, so we, we see all of this decays happen. We're just, if this is the explanation, we're compressing that into such a small time window that it's going to vaporize the earth instead of slowly reducing the heat so well, that it can radiate. Well, for example, there's a lot of potassium in your body. Mm -hmm. And potassium is a radiometric decay uh, isotope. And so if you accelerate that by a factor of a million, all that potassium in your body is going to be decaying a million times or a billion times faster. You're not going to survive that. Yeah, our body doesn't respond well to that. No, so it very doesn't. good. Well, okay. So one last one last question here. Uh, you know, we've talked about some of the different areas where the scientific evidence really does point to the Earth much being much older. What do you find the single most, or the yeah, you know, the, the most compelling pieces of evidence that the Earth is really four and a half billion years old? Well, the fact that we see uranium two thirty five, two thirty eight, and thorium two thirty two decaying into three distinct isotopes of lead. And so we can look at uh, the ancient materials on the earth. We can look at the amount of lead 207, 206, 208, the amount of uranium 232, uh, or 235, 238, and thorium 232. You're getting six independent measures of the age of that sample. The fact that you get the identical answer from all six methods tells us indeed. And by the way, uh, the rate, rate to which uranium and, th and thorium decay is fairly close to the age of the Earth, which means you're getting a very accurate measure. It explains why with confidence we can say the Earth is 4.5662 billion years old, uh, give or take 0. .0001 billion. I mean, that's how precise it is. Well, that's a pretty accurate number, and yeah. I, I, thank you for your comments here today, Hugh. You know, uh, 
in the church, we've had this argument about how old the earth is. And, you know, there's biblical reasons that people give for it being old and young, and there's scientific reasons for it being old and young. But when we look at the scientific evidence, it really does seem to point a very compelling picture that the earth really is four and a half billion years old. And that's the way God intended to create it. And that's what he's revealed to us both in science and in scripture.